Hi Capricorn. All right, welcome to this space. Welcome to now. I hope you're doing good. Okay, so as you can tell, if you can see, <clears throat> I decided to sit in the pool for you because, well, it's hard for you to relax, right? <laughs> to kind of kick back. And so here we are. Uh, if you're new here, by the way, my name's Rashi, and if you're returning, of course, welcome back. Now, if I happen to scowl, I'm so sorry. I didn't bring my hat, and I'm already in the pool, and I'm not going to get out now. You know what I mean? I'm already in it, so i got to be in it. <laughs> so let's see here. Hold on. It is hot today. Okay. Let's see. Let's see what's up with you. Let's see where you're at. What do we have here? Oh my gosh, this card, this impermanence card showed up for Pisces, it showed up for Scorpio, now it showed up for you. Okay, well let's talk about it. It says life is always changing and I drift, I, I prefer the word move, let's shift that. Drifting is a little dangerous sometimes, right? Life is always changing. And I move easily through those changes, good and bad. As I move through hard times, I can take comfort in knowing that I will leave them behind. As I move away from good times, I can take comfort in knowing that more will come my way. Impermanence. And then you have that with the Four of Pentacles and the Seven of Pentacles, which is kind of like, I don't know if I want to let go of something, right? What do you need to let go of? Is it fear? I would assume for some of you, it could be something physical or having to do with other people too. Some of you, this could be family related. I keep seeing the word anger too. Um, right, again, This is almost like, okay, the, the moving through hard times, right? Four of Pentacles is like, okay, moving through this tough situation, working through this thing in myself, it, it, working through this big, this thing, right? That's emotional too. But you take comfort in knowing that you will leave that discomfort behind, right? And then sometimes we even have to let go of something that feels good or feels familiar which very well could be a negative feeling. Do you know what I mean? Um, and knowing again, taking comfort in the fact that more is going to come your way. So, so some of you need to, I see again, let go of some kind of fear that you're going to lose something. Um, you know, in your prayer too, it was interesting. It was like, because they're always different. But yours this time was uh, talked about finding your faith again. And particularly, I paused on that. It, there was like a pause after that. And particularly, it was like faith in love. You know what I mean? Maybe this does have to do with um, <clears throat> partnership for some of you. Or like previous experiences with other people that made you close in, like feel ashamed, and then question your own value. Do you know what I mean? Maybe that's something that you're, that you're letting that, that's where that can let that drift, right? Huh. Because I guess if you're okay with letting go, then you're going to have more. <clears throat> Maybe this is also being in a position of receiving, 
right? I guess when we're ready, what do they say? When the student is ready, the teacher arrives. When the lover is ready, then the other lover appears, right? When the friend is ready, the friend appears. And the person is ready, the job arrives, right? Things like this. And I guess that, again, is some sort of test in faith. Huh. Good girl. Now I know there's a little bit of a, so there's a little bit of a wobble. Let's see. <clears throat> oh, I see, because this breaks, the, okay. What I'm seeing is like the two of pentacles, which is Jupiter and Capricorn. So it's kind of like, you have options, but you have to, with the two of pentacles, you have to let go of one of them and trust the fact that the one is, will actually create three like the one will double itself into three if you have faith to let go, right? So I guess this is also having an, a, a more, this is reestablishing the having more of a feeling of faith, an emotional place in yourself so that You can connect with others more in this heart space. Do you know what I mean? It's like the sun and the moon. And it's something about finding your match. Okay. Let's see what's going on with other people. Ooh. Oh, is that why? Okay, well, that's fine. Oh, is that why? So you have the card of beauty, and you have the queen of wands. Well, I suppose you have a really attractive friend. I'm also seeing this as you, though. Because this is other people, but what I'm seeing, it's almost like it's showing me first where this is how other people view you. So you're beautiful, you're handsome, you're attractive, you're powerful. You're magical. You are mysterious. You are kind of scary sometimes. You are, uh, you're no one to fuck with, right? But you never really do anything too hurtful, which is good. Maybe you need to hear this. Um, here we go. And you can repeat after me if you want to. I'm beautiful even when I don't think it. I'm beautiful even when I don't see it. I'm beautiful no matter how many people don't say it. I'm beautiful and I don't even care if you know it. I'm beautiful, which is why I don't have to try so hard all the time to show it. You know, cause that's the thing, this Leo energy here, this Queen of Wands, all Leos to me are gorgeous. They're gorgeous. But they're also kind of like average, but they're gorgeous because they love who they are. You know, you don't really see, there ain't too many Leos that like make themselves up too much, you know, like try to pretend to be something else. It's like, even when they're dirty, even when they're gruff, even when they just woke up, it's like they, they love themselves and so they know that so others see them as beautiful, because I guess how we see ourselves is how we're seen, right? Okay. Maybe someone's wishing someone would recognize their own power. Uh, And it's not exactly about ultimately a physical beauty. Remember, it's, you can be a total plain Jane, you know, like, I don't know what the male 
alternative of that of that term is, but um, Bobby next door, I don't know, <laughs> but this is like beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So what do you think that is, what do you think, how do I see this? In other people, how do you see them as beautiful? Like, what's beautiful about other people in your life right now? What do you admire um, in them? You know, their beautiful face, their beautiful attitude, their beautiful uh, expression of self, or their beautiful creative process, or their beautiful mind. Like, what is it? Maybe you just want to share... Um, <clears throat> Maybe you want to just share in this time. Good girl. Give her a bone. Yeah. All right, let's see what's up with work. Ooh, these cards are getting hot. Hot, hot, hot. Okay. All right, this, this is work. You have the card of imagination. I want to just read it because they're pretty funny. <laughs> says, I revel in the wondrous, mysterious, most beauteous power of my imagination, and let it whisk me away on a right-brained romp through all things nonsensical, Zeus plus Wonka style. I am an off-road adventurer, playing the upside-down, glow-in-the-dark woods of possibility. <laughs> there is no no here, only woe and flow, and holy moly, here we go. <laughs> it says, hmm. Was there something in that brownie? <laughs> okay, so... What is this saying? Oh, that breeze felt good. Thank you. Thank you for that cloud. See, sometimes we think like, oh, a little bit of... It's not so bright. It's not so warm. It's bad. It's like, no. It's Sometimes it's totally needed. So... In relation to what you're working on, I suppose whatever you're creating right now or any ideas that you have, it may be very helpful for you to um, talk to other people about it, maybe get their opinion about it, some sort of advice, uh, you know, kind of like, well, what do you think? You know, maybe you want to talk to someone that's done it before. Um, this could also be one of those things where maybe some of you are you have some sort of creative talent or like your friends are always telling you how awesome you are but it's almost like there's a question here to your own awesomeness <laughs> maybe you've been defining yourself in a certain kind of way like I am this and now that's shifting and I see whatever that is is actually making things a lot lighter because I just saw someone throwing a bunch of heavy things off a boat so that it doesn't sink. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't need this. I don't need that. Like really getting down, which, which in essence is getting down to the nitty gritty of what you, what's really important, right? Now again, to be specific, I guess if we're looking at work, it could also be where... Um, How am I seeing this? If you're having an issue with anyone at work, say like another employee, could even be a boss, um, I would make sure not to discuss that with any other employees. You know what I mean? Um, and if anything, there could like, maybe there's some sort of mediator that's needed with something. And I guess also remember that you love work, so I feel like you always make work into your family. I mean, you love your family too, but you, you turn everything into family, right? Cancer is the opposite of you. It's like everything you do, you love, right? You love so deeply and you're so dedicated to it, whatever you get into. But you have to remember that not everyone is your friend, right? Not everybody is your friend, right? Seventh house is, is open enemies. You know, as an example. Um, <clears throat> I 
And if for some reason this this imagination card, I'm kind of seeing it like like this is like the art teacher. Azumi, get out of that. Out. I know what you're eating. No way. Um, I just saw this as like an art teacher <clears throat> where they're in the middle of like the process of making art, like the nonsensical, what did this say? All things nonsensical. That's what I keep seeing on this. It's like maybe, maybe there needs to be a little bit of more left brain included in something, right? So if someone else, if you do ask someone else's opinion about something or someone corrects you or something like this, it's like, well, understand that everyone works differently and that sometimes is very helpful, right? Some people are more right brain, some people are more left brain. And then depending what we're doing, it can switch. So maybe you wanna get an opinion, you know, say for instance, you're wondering how you're doing, oh, we just talked about this last month. So you jump, you're gonna jump two steps sooner than later, right, into this new position of, of authority and of uh, responsibility and success, right? It's a good jump. Uh, so maybe you want to imagine what you want, whatever you're imagining of your future, and where you want this success to be. Well, use your imagination to, to look at what you'd want that to be, like in a sort of whimsical way. But then I guess you also need logic. You also need logic or again, like another person's opinion or something like this. Huh. Okay, let's keep going. Um, let's look at your challenges. Hi, baby. What's your challenges? Criticism and the Two of Cups. Maybe this is all about love. Like love and sex and romance and creation with other people and passion. Is that what this is all about? How's that, how's that going right now in your life? All, all those things we just mentioned. Because again, this could be one of those things where someone's like, I want to be with you forever, but it was all a lie, you know, or you said it and it was all a lie or whatever, whatever the, the, the mistrust was or, ha or has been in relation to love and the faith in love, faith in the fact that you are, I mean, do we all need to improve? Is this why we have difficulties? I suppose. Um... Let's read this criticism card. I said, I, re I remind myself that there is nothing, nothing in this world that everyone likes. If someone doesn't get me, my perspective or my work, that's okay. There are also people in the world who don't like pizza. But does that mean that pizza is bad? Nope. And it's actually all good because more pizza for us. <clears throat> you know, maybe that's the thing is like, how sensitive are you when someone close to you, because um, there's constructive criticism, right? Which some people could just see as purely criticism. You know, say you're in a sensitive spot, so you're not feeling confident. Or you're in a low spot, right? You're real tight about, somebody's real tight about something. It's like, well, someone might take it wrong. So I guess the more... It's not about not taking what people say seriously, but it's, it's about not worrying about whether you're going to lose it or not. Because it's never yours to begin with. It's not yours. And I guess that's what gives the freeness of, and the fun in connecting with something. Justice. Right, your children are not yours, your family is not yours, you know, it, it's, 
even Zumi, I love her to death, but she, I mean, I'm responsible for her at this point because of the circumstance exactly, but like, she's not technically mine, you know, she's her own, she's her own creature. Because you know what happens when someone's afraid of, like, doesn't like criticism towards them? Then they're afraid to speak up to other people also. Right? And sometimes, I've been thinking about this a lot. I'm, I'm, it seems to me that what I'm coming to gather is that humans, perhaps, one of the reasons why humans need other, other humans sometimes is for correction. I mean, it's for various things, but particularly correction, right? Like, hey, you know, someone's like, hey, do, do you do you like the do you like this meal? And they're like, I mean, I guess they could just lie and be like, yeah, this is delicious. But what if it was something that they didn't like? Did we talk about this a long time ago where you were like fed something when you were a kid that you didn't, you were forced to eat something? Interesting. Who is it that does get you? I mean, not, you don't want a yes man, right? We talked about this last month too. You don't want, you don't want a, a good friend is not somebody who's always agreeing with you. I mean, a good friend might be like, yeah, you're beautiful, but your ass don't look good in those pants. You know, like, <laughs> but because it's honest, it's like, well, I'm not going to let you go out there and get a fool. You got something in your teeth. You know, it's, they're not saying you're ugly. It's, it, they're saying, like, they're just letting you know. Maybe there's someone who in your life is really open like that. And who is it in your life? And where is it, I guess, in parts of you where it's really closed and afraid to be honest? self-love and the page of swords which is your spiritual development 2222 let's read this it says i openly embrace a feeling of self-love i love myself because i understand myself i love myself as the most committed partner i will ever have i show myself love any way that i can and when i screw up i remember to be gentle with myself if not i'm gonna make myself sleep on the couch got that self <laughs> this whole reading is about love how attractive do you feel right now who is it i, I want you to think back and i know sometimes these are hard memories but i want you to release it Recognize it so you can throw it off the boat. I mean, it can, might continue to float towards you and bump off the side, but at least it's not in your boat anymore. Think of a time where someone said something about you that made you embarrassed or insecure. And then I want you in that moment, in that memory, I want you to, when you're there, you can feel it, right? Refeel it. How do you feel about it? And then create a different way that you responded to that. And if this is happening in your life now for some reason or another, then you have to create a new response of... It's not about boisterous power. It's just kind of like, it's kind of like Leo. Like you, again, you tell Leo they're ugly or stupid or whatever. They're like, they don't care. They don't care. Cause there's no, they, no, cause they love themselves. Cause they know. I'm not saying Leos don't get sad, they do. But they, even when they're sad, they still love themselves. They still have fun, they still have sex, they still go on dates, they still 
have like get togethers they still express themselves they still make art you know then they, they never really stop creating leo's strong in this huh that queen of wands Remember, humans can help other humans to get to where we need to be. It's not always an easy way to do it. Sometimes you have to face your fears. Um, and I guess how people talk about their own insecurities or how they deal with that, because everybody has them, it's helpful, right? Okay. That feels right. Hmm. I love you, Capricorn. You'll sort it out. Oh, a little baby spider. You'll sort it out. Maybe you do have to pick one thing over, you know, it's it's like, again, I keep seeing the two pentacles. Like, you'll, you'll figure it out. You know what to do. And where, wherever it is that you don't know what to do, realize that whenever you're confused, Aquarius has this too. Whenever you're confused about something, it's because it's emotional. And it's probably a lack of good emotion around it. So maybe some, perhaps... So maybe putting in some, you know, it could be like readdressing an old wound, redressing a wound, right? Because you got to pay attention to them because then you'll, as you, as you start, when you start to realize you have something that's hurt and then you, you dress it all up and clean it all up and dress, dress your wound, it's like you got to go back and redress it, right? And then eventually if you pay it, keep paying attention to it in a certain kind of patterning, right, timing, then eventually you're gonna be like, oh, that's all healed, cool. I can take this off, right? You know, you can't just do it once or pretend that it's, you know, not gushing blood everywhere. Okay, you can do it. I love you so much, Capricorn. Thank you uh, for this time. This is actually a really beautiful time for you to have this conversation. This is a, a Gemini's and in conjunct to you. So you really having this deep conversation about other people and love and all of this, it's, it's so helpful, you know, and imagining what you want that to be, what you want that to feel like. Because then that's how you create your future. You know, if there's a lot of negativeness around it or lack of again faith then well I guess there's just more learning to do but I also see that you can do it and I see you somebody meeting their match this is a very powerful creative you know these are the only two uh, court cards in the deck that are actually looking at one another having a conversation you know being really real with it yeah and I guess whatever conversation you're having could have to do with family, etc. Whatever, it's 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 bigger life lessons stuff. Like you'll you'll figure it out. You'll figure it out. Thank you so much. Uh, I hope this month is good for you. Um, I hope this was of service, of course. I hope wherever you are, the weather is beautiful, and if you're going, whatever you're growing, I hope it's growing well. Thank you also, speaking of growing, any of you who have decided to extend your learning and growing and planted your seed, planted yourself as a little beautiful seed in the Garden of Patreon, thank you also. Uh, that place is also growing, that garden's actually growing too, it feels so good. Um, so thanks. Thanks. And if you want to check it out, if you don't know, there's a link down below. Um, 
Yeah. I'll talk to you next time.